Let, let's talk about um, and just um, I guess to give people a sense of of uh, the, the I guess the scope of what constitutes radicalism and uh, mm-hmm. and you know the abolitionists as as, as well, radicals. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I start with Tom Paine, who's sort of your quintessential American radical at the time of the American Revolution. You know, he said a share in two revolutions is living to some purpose. He was in the American Revolution, the French Revolution, a guy who completely challenged the existing political order, uh, attacking monarchy, aristocracy, uh, and also putting forward programs for economic equality, which were quite radical for the 1790s. Um, and then, yeah, you go up through the abolitionists I put a lot of emphasis on, the people who struggled against slavery, uh, for two reasons. One, slavery was deeply embedded in American life. It was not, you know, it was the, really the basis of the American economy for a long time. And um, it wasn't just a little footnote like we right. sometimes uh, prefer to think. Uh, and the abolitionists really pioneered the sort of modern radical methods of how to change society, you know, going out and with pamphlets and petitions and speeches and uh, newspapers. And you might almost say operating both above ground and below ground at the same time. They had all these public events and, uh, you know, working within the system in that way. But they also violated the law. They helped fugitive slaves, which is very much against the law. They had this kind of underground activity also, the Underground Railroad, we call it, and uh, so they kind of operated at both levels at the same time, and I think that's an interesting lesson for subsequent radicals, even today. You know, people who are opposing Trump's, um, you know, policies on immigrants, on uh, refugees, are uh, going to court, which is right within the system. But on the other hand, they're also, um, you know, offering sanctuary to people, saying we're going to help people who are banned by the government. Uh, whether that violates the law or just says we're not going to cooperate with the law, it is very much in the abolitionist tradition. So, so I mean, if, if we're talking about radicalism as a dynamic, right, between uh, yep. the status quo and, and, and others' belief, I mean, does... Can uh, You know, when a person gets radicalized, right, by, by changing events... You know, because it seems to me that we're going, we've got two things going on here. Uh, on one hand, we've had a, a nascent, and, and then maybe, uh, you know, one could look at this actually uh, getting born uh, at those WTO protests and maybe then put on hold briefly because of, of 9-11 and sort of um, a, mm-hmm. a, 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 a pushback there, but then reemerging and, and particularly... Um, as a function of, of the financial crisis. We've got this sort of nascent movement um, uh, on the, the, the left and, and, and particularly uh, amongst the youth. Uh, and then we're then met with sort of these, well, I think we could say is radicalism on the right, which, which could also radicalize a whole nother set of people, but not necessarily in the same way that those pre-existing radicals. Is, is, am I making sense here? No, I, I, I hear what you're saying, absolutely. And, you know, radicalism exists on the right, and right now it's uh, sort of obviously uh, dominant in some ways, although the first couple of weeks of Trump's administration have shown the existence of a very big uh, radical resistance tendency uh, in the country, which I think is all to the good. Um, I, I think the main point you're making is, Uh, Two things. One, radicalism tends to emerge in moments of crisis. You know, when the existing system seems to be delegitimized, such as by the financial crisis of 2008, you know, all the talk about how globalization was solving all our problems and everything was just hunky-dory, you know, that became to be seen as ridiculous in lies. You know, we'd been fed lies for 20 years by our uh, presidents uh, and others about how wonderful the economy was working for everybody. Uh, and the crisis of 2008 uh, sort of showed it wasn't. Uh, that opened the door to the, le- the delegitimation of the existing ideology, opened the door to new ones. There's no guarantee that they're going to go left, right, or any other direction. You have the uh, Occupy Wall Street and uh, movements like that, which, uh, you know, were much more on the left wing. And then you have the Tea Party and others, which, and, and feeding into Trump's campaign, which uh, go in a very different direction. So, the sort of cracking up of the system does not necessarily lead in one direction, but it does open the door for new uh, possibilities. And I think, you know, radicals of the left have to seize that opportunity, which exists today because of the uh, crisis of 2008 and what followed. 
Hey, it's Sam Cedar. Why don't you uh, subscribe to this channel? You can do so right, uh, right over here. Over. Subscribe.